Well, I'm sure everybody's heard the saying, there's a fox in the hen house. I found out firsthand last fall about what that really means. Uh, as you can see here, I got a temporary sheet of plywood up here. I was having a fox actually climb up my gate here and scare in right over the top and take care of my hens. That leads me to why I'm rebuilding this gate here. I'm going to make it six foot tall, so it would be the same height as my fence here. And I'm going to make it actually a half inch wider than it currently is. Also, instead of using the pocket hole uh, jig setup uh, that I used to construct this one, I'm going to be using lap joints, which means you're going to actually notch out uh, a two by four's width, so three and a half inches on each stud, and they're going to lay together and then you can screw them. This has held up fine for the last four years now, but it is just a little flimsy. So I think that would really tighten things up. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, to start here for materials, I just got some extra fence, and of course it's the end of the roll, so it's a mess, but that's the last of it, so I'll make do. I got my two by fours. Like I said, I'm making this uh, six foot tall and just under six foot wide here at 66 inches. So I got a couple two by 12s and a couple two by eights. So for hardware, I'm gonna be using uh, exterior grade uh, fasteners one and a quarter for uh, screwing the lap joints together. And then I'm gonna be using some pocket hold screws uh, with the Craig set up uh, for fastening the supports in the middle. So I'm gonna get started just by cutting out the frame itself. And that's uh, in my case, six foot by 66 inches. All right, so now if you're using a circular saw, you're just gonna set your blade depth to three quarters of an inch to account for half of your uh, two by. If you're using a miter saw like I will be, most miter saws have like a stop and this one is just a flip out and then there's a gauge here to control your depth. So you'll adjust that taking a piece of like three quarter wood, laying it down and just making sure you just barely touch it. So now that my stop is set on my miter box here, you can see at, all, at full retraction, I still wouldn't be able to cut halfway through that entire two by. So that's what brings me to having this extra two by here. I will attach that to the back of the saw and clamp it on here. And that way, as I cut my notches, through my good two by four, it'll just flow into that one, keeping a consistent depth all the, all the way. So for these notches, you're gonna want them three and a half inches wide because that's how wide a two by four is. So you're gonna start by making that So that was the important one. Now you're pretty much just gonna chisel away at this all the way till the end. All right, now as long as the safety police aren't watching, I'll show you how I get this all real smooth.
All right, so now I get to get into the fun stuff, actually start building. So to start, I'm going to lay out the frame itself, and then I'll square it all up and uh, start driving a few screws. All right, so once you dry fit it up, you'll notice if you have any imperfections or anything you need to fix. On a number of these, I noticed that I'm about a half a blade to a blade width short of what they need to be, probably because of the wood swelling and pressure treating. So I'm gonna go back and just touch up those spots and then we can get started uh, screwing this together. All right, so the next step is gonna to be to square all this up and start screwing it together now that you've fixed any imperfections you had. I'm gonna be using this super large foldable 345 square. Works great for this type of stuff or any type of uh, squaring up flooring or whatever you need to do where you'd normally have to measure it. I could probably leave a link in the description if you're interested. It's not exactly cheap. All right, so as far as cross bracing, that's gonna depend on, I guess, how big your gate is. Uh, as you saw on my last gate, I only had one brace on it and it worked perfectly fine for that reason. I'm just gonna add another one to hopefully alleviate some of that uh, flexibility. I'm not sure how much of a difference it's gonna make. Uh, I just figure I'll add it this time. But when you do only use one brace, for instance, make sure it's going from the bottom of the hinge side to the top of the latch side. And the reason for that is, is it actually supports that top edge of the gate then. Because this will be physically holding the anchor point, which is right on the hinge. And it's gonna hold up the latch side. If you did it the opposite way, it's actually just adding weight and pretty much doing the opposite of what your intentions are. So that's just one thing to note, obviously, if you're doing a cross or whatever, it's not gonna make a difference. But just thought I'd mention that. Then as far as laying out my cross braces, I know you can do the math to figure it out, but what I'm gonna do is actually just use it as a template. I'm gonna space each, each side equally in the center here, and then I'm just gonna mark it with a pencil. So once I got one side marked, I'll cut it, set that in, and then mark the other just to make sure we get it as tight as possible. And there you go. Now we'll just pull this one out and do the same for the other side. All right, so now the other one is the important one, like I said earlier. So I'm gonna put that one back in I'm actually going to pocket screw it in and that way we can line up everything to make sure our overlap is correct. So typically you'd use this stop on here and then you'd just butt it up against the end of the piece but because we're cutting on basically 45s here we're gonna have to offset it a bit in order so then our pocket screws aren't way out here. We need them in here a little bit. So to do that, I'm just gonna clamp this on till the end. So now that we got that one installed, now we laid out the other one across right where it needs to be and then we'll mark it out.
So yesterday when I tried to install that mangled piece of fence, it came pretty quick that that wasn't going to work out. So I ended up having to go and buy another roll of fencing. And I'm actually going to run it uh, opposite of what you typically would do. I'm going to run it horizontal just because it'll match my existing fence a little better. So one little trick I like to use is just taking a pair of vice grips, grabbing onto your fence just past uh, your frame, and that way you can really pull it tight in order to get a nice snug fence. Finally, just go around and cut all the excess. So these hinges are actually pretty simple, which is one of the reasons why I like them. Pretty much all you do is just line up the edge of your uh, gate with right where the rounded part comes to a close. It's uh, pretty much that simple. I just like to center them uh, equal distance on each side. All right, as you can see, we're down by the gate opening and the muddy mess. The type of latch I'm using is gonna include this leg style uh, hinge. So the way you configure this out uh, to set your proper height is as you can see this is going to be resting directly against the bottom of that latch. So what I need to do is figure out the measurement from the bottom of your gate to the bottom of this latch which in this case is one inch. Then you got to figure out your spacing you want it off the ground. In my case I wanted about an inch maybe a little bit more off the ground and that's going to determine if you're going to hit stuff. So if you're on uneven terrain, you really got to be mindful of that as your door might only open halfway. But you also want to keep in count, you want to keep the critters out or in, whichever your case is. So these are half inch leg bolts. So I'm using a 5 16 drill bit. I'm using this obnoxiously long one just so then I can ensure that I'm going in relatively straight. I think if you're going to be putting in a ton of these, I would come up with some type of uh, socket that you'd cut and then it would just slip over this to drive it in. Uh, with just a few of them, just a simple box and wrench can do the trick. So to figure out now where you want to put your top hinge, you're going to measure from the bottom of that one to the bottom of this one. In my case, it's 68 and 7 eighths. Now rather than trying to hold it right in the middle of that one, we'll just go on top of it and then we'll subtract half the thickness of the leg bolt. So that's a quarter inch in this case as it's a half inch overall. That should put our hole right in the center of this. So we got 68 and 7 eighths and now we're going to go to 68 and 5 eighths to account for that quarter of an inch.
All right, so now that we got our hinges driven in, we're gonna set the gate on here so then we can square it up using these leg bolts. So as you can see, we're way closer on the top than we are at the bottom. So that means we got to screw in that upper leg bolt and that will pull this away from this post. So I became quite the fan of just these automatic latchers. So all you do is shut the door and it automatically latches over a pin and secures it. Simple. Now as far as uh, your pin for the latch, and this I just cut out of some scrap metal. All you're going to want to do is put it in your latch and line it up with where you want it. Once you're happy with that, then you'll just drill it out. Double check before you drive it home. It's perfect. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.